importance of education in India. So far, you know, a developing or middle uh, country, it takes important. It's realized very early before the even the international body recognizes it. And since then, we have been having an interpretive there. And just a uh, nice to collect some good works contributed by this great man, great son of India, who was an author, who was a politician, who was a teacher, thinker, and he was a president of the Indian National Congress twice. And he was a close associate of the first Prime Minister of India, Pati Jawaharlal Nehru. And the first education minister, he was served as some of nearly or eight, nine years. During this time, he was instrumental in he conceived the idea of uh, establishing the regulatory body of the higher education in India, that is nothing but another than university gratification. But for his encouragement, but for his support, but for his idea, this UCC, which governs all the university, all the of higher education across the country, could not have an establishment. And he was instrumental in establishing IITs. He contributed for the establishment of the Development of the Indian Institute of Science, the Institute of Science has been established more than 100 years back. That's different for the, but during his technology and education minister, he got a lot of things, he got the metamorphosis. He mentioned that about the education, he was instrumental in establishing National Science Academy, National Sanghi Academy, National Nataka Kalata Drama Academy. See, that means music, then uh, what is that one? Oh. Art and uh, literature. So, you are instrumental in establishing for now. Here, 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 National Science Academy, you are opposed to this person, like a Sanghi Academy, you are opposed to this person. His vision has happened over. He had realized that it is possible to build our country, which I got recently a couple of years back, independence only through education. He realized that and he gave a impetus so much for promoting the education. You see, did such and such an occasion. And one thing was, you know, on the level of this month, we were all kind of disturbed. I would say relaxed like that because of the rain and all the building was disturbed. It was a holiday day. So, because of that, the other one should be celebrated on 11th of November, every year. So, but because of that, we say, and that, as a matter of fact, in this National Education League, we, for our convenience, can say that even we have our organizing tomorrow, now I think our organizing. Uh, there are diamond metal conference on metal education as one of the international speakers of that. So it's a good thing that the ARMC is a part of all these particular activities and we all should be proud. On this occasion, I bring greetings to you from our honorable Chancellor, Board of Management, University of College, from to all of you. And I must congratulate the students' council. You know, I have already uh, praised them a number of times on the virtual platform that they will program my students, all the students, and, and for the students, wonderful. And I think it was much needed activity for students also, they were so expecting. And uh, many of the students might be having the hidden our government innovation instincts, which will surface out this education innovation itself, certainly. Will that uh, identify them, nurture them, and to see that, you know, we grow into uh, some entrepreneur. This is what they did. Huh? And today's debate is quite appropriate. This inclusion of entrepreneurship in the curriculum of the mental curriculum, is it uh, necessary or not? We will see how we are going to be the pros. Japu will be stronger. Okay? With these viewers, I once again wish, uh, wish you all uh, good wishes from this, from this uh, happy occasion of our occasion of national medical education and national education. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. I request our honorable medical superintendent, Dr. Jai Singh, to address the audience.
become a boss of your own. You set your own office. You can choose your own team. Suppose if you are working in some institution, some team will be given to you. You cannot choose. Whereas if you are an entrepreneur, you have the right to choose your own team. And you can have a creative expression, which we cannot do with the institutions or with the government. If you tell some ideas to the government, government may take or may not take. If you tell your ideas to the institution, the institution management may take your ideas or may not take. So, when you become as an entrepreneur, you have uh, the possibility of creating even more ideas and a greater potential profit. Can I be both a doctor and an entrepreneur? Definitely possible. As I told you already, starting a clinic, starting a nursing home, starting a hospital. The best example which everyone knows will be Dr. P. C. Reddy. P. C. Reddy is a very renowned cardiologist, one of the most famous doctors, current as an entrepreneur in the country. He is the founder and chairman of the Apollo Hospital Group, India's first corporate chain of uh, hospitals that was also formed by him. So, Dr. P. C. Reddy is a successful entrepreneur. How do I become uh, an entrepreneur in the medical field? Sometimes even brilliant ideas are under by some misguided planning. So what is the way for a successful medical entrepreneur? Number one, conduct an effective market research. Look for the partners. Second one will be look for the partners. One more thing I would like to tell you is, as medical students, you may be a gold medal winner, but I have seen many gold medal winners, they don't shine in the light because they don't know the marketing for the deal. Okay. So now this is the time to introduce this sort of entrepreneurship in the curriculum, in this education system. So, to debate whether it is needed or not needed, we have the debate today. I hope we will get very good outcome of the debate. I wish all success for the persons who are actively going to take part in the debate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Mahalakshmi, Dean HP, to address our audience about today's event. Good afternoon. I was, uh, the other day I was reading a book. It has published from Harvard Business School. It's called The Innovator's DNA. So what's in the DNA of an innovator? Is it persistence that you actually catch hold of an idea and keep on working on it till you make a success of it? Is it uh, your creativity? You think differently. You look at things differently from what other people are doing. Is it looking, the, one of the reasons what it has been proposed is trying to look at the problem from multiple perspectives. So that is something which is very uniquely attributed to innovators. They don't think only in a single track motion. They try to see your product from the consumer's point of view, from the production's point of view, from the 
point of view of marketing. So they bring in multiple perspectives to a same problem. So this is something which is embedded in education for a very long time. You know about Socrates. It is called as Socratic method of exploration of different ideas. Plato, Aristotle, so many great minds actually had that formulated this kind of exploring. So when you try and argue a problem from different perspectives, both far and against, from this perspective, from uh, the consumer's perspective or from the uh, stakeholders, different stakeholders' perspective, you get to get different ideas which will help you to consolidate what is that your understanding about that problem and which will give you a much better perspective. So that way these debates and uh, Sessions where brainstorming sessions where the people come up with their original ideas and listen are extremely good. And I really appreciate uh, Madam for coming up with this idea because we've had a lot of poster competition, essay competition, things like that. But this is a nice one, I think, uh, for us to have. And I'm very sure that our students and PGs and faculty members who are going to speak are going to bring in a lot of new ideas and perspectives to this. I am as eager to listen to this as you are going to uh, happy listening. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so today's debate topic is a little tricky and interesting. So just to introduce this topic, we have Dr. Vishnu Bhai, Director of Medical Research and President of IIC, to uh, 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 enlighten us about today's event and the topic.
like uh, before getting into the subject as such, the topic of the debate is should entrepreneurship education be included in the healthcare professions education or not? So that will be supported by the affirmative team. The affirmative team includes Dr. Lavanya R, Assistant Professor OBG. Please give a big round of applause. And their teammates are Dr. Vaishnav R. PG, Mr. Ashutosh Pradhan, third and BBS, and Master Dragadesh, first and BBS. See, I can see a bunch of excitement in you. See, actually, even this, they will just be okay. You don't think that they will like, cast their hands, they will fight, nothing is going to happen like this. Okay. Then, then the negative team. We will introduce the negative team. That will be leaded by Dr. Meghnath sir, our associate professor of pharmacology. Dr. Ayush Tiyagi, postgraduate, please. Ms. Mushkan Raja, UG student, please. And Ms. Kajan Ashadja, UG student, please. So the affirmative team to the left of the judges will be speaking in favor, and the negative team to the right of the judges will be uh, speaking the negative part of So, shall we start? Yes. So, first we will ask the affirmative we will start with the affirmative team, Dr. Lavanya R, Assistant Professor, OBG. So, I guess like they have master plan of uh, debating. So, Dr. Vaishnav, it is student will be starting in the please. See, uh, rules was previously informed with you, with you right? And uh, your, this marking also will be done on uh, which side has performed the best. So, the leaders of each of the sides will be given 6 minutes to 8 minutes each and the other people will be given 4 minutes each. So, try to stick on to your times and to the points. Right? You can start some please. So, good evening, respected uh, dignitaries, respected judges, ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic is about entrepreneurship. And uh, what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is nothing, just not just starting a business of its own. It's how well you market your idea and how successful you are in marketing your idea. That is the main point of entrepreneurship. In, in, in the 1990s, there was a person called Albert from Colombia. He was a fitness um, instructor. He was an aerobic instructor. Uh, he one day he forgot his musical instruments for the aerobic class. So what happened? He had 100 countries which has been franchised and it has been a successful model. So coming to our medical field, marketing in the medical field. Once you enter a medical school. When your father told the neighbors or your relatives that my son and my daughter has joined into the medical school, the first thing they say is your son or your daughter's life is settled because he will get a job in a medical college or in a hospital or if nothing is there, he can put a, you can buy him a stent and um, um, BP apparatus and he can run his own show there. So he can win his bread and butter there. Right? How to convert this bread and butter into biryani is what how a successful entrepreneur is going to be. There was one more thing they used to say, not only is he going to get a life, he will get a life partner also from a medical school. But that can be debated on some other day, like a disaster management or something. And uh, so, how is this going to work out? So what is the thing with, uh, with the entrepreneurship training? What is entrepreneurship actually? How, is, how successful is the entrepreneurship? Um, saying, uh, if you take how successful you are in the first four years of your business is what is going to decide how the marketing or how the brand has been organized. 
So if 10 people are starting the business on day one, the number of people who succeed or who is happy with their entrepreneurship after one year of business is nearly 50%. 50% of the people back up. Okay, back out of it. And then over the four year period, only three people still sustain that business. The other two has they gained background or they have uh, lost their pathway. So there is only 30% of the people who have um, been making into a successful business. This is not because they they could uh, they couldn't uh, um, withstand the losses. It was because they were unsuccessful because the failures were not taught to them and how to withstand the failures, how to become an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur is a person who has withstood a lot of failures in life. So that should be uh, that should be a very innovative thing which should be in the medical curriculum. Not only the medical curriculum, in all the curriculum of uh, UG as well as the post graduation. See that is, the entrepreneurship is nothing but a leadership quality, right? Leadership quality as well as the creative thinking. How the creative thinking becomes into a, um, a, a brand is what is called as marketing. Okay, say I'm an uh, ENT surgeon. If I, I have a novel way of harvesting a graft for a timbroplasty, timbroplasty is nothing but reconstruction of a eardrum. If I have a, a, an idea of a, a, a novel approach of this, if I'm going to approach 10, uh, around 50 doctors of ENT surgeons in Pondicherry and I want to say about this, I have an approach called uh, Vaishnav approach in timbroplasty, and if I am able to at least successfully cover 20, 10 to 20 doctors in, in Pondicherry. I have become an entrepreneur there. So now I have to, mar I have to market my skill. So 10 to 20 people have accepted mine and they are successfully doing that. Then I have to market my skill. So through various methods, I am training each and every one of um, who, who are um, happy with me uh, throughout the world, throughout my country. So at the end of one year, I have trained around 1,000 ENT surgeons about my uh, novel technique. So I have been an entrepreneur of my technique for 1000 people and 500, 500 doctors or 500 ENT surgeons are happy or uh, are successful in um, uh, successful with the idea of what I have done and I have become a successful entrepreneur and that's now called as branding. With the help of patency and research publications, this can be adjourned and made into a successful thing. Or no? Uh, we can conclude. We can conclude. It's more than time. 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 You want the real speaker? So I will uh, start with a, a, a small experience of me while starting a clinic. Post the MBPS, I was into a clinic. I started a clinic for my daily thing to study along with the post graduation. So once I started a clinic, as I said, this is the strength and uh, uh, BP apparatus. I put up my clinic, put up a beautiful board there, but no patients to it. So it has been one week, two weeks, I had zero patients to be, and I was sitting like that. And as soon as I go home, my grandma used to ask me, how many mosquitoes did you get? So I used to say that I installed a good night machine and I used to forget it. Then there was a person from uh, my dad's business uh, partner who, who came into my clinic and said that uh, why, no, why don't you uh, appoint a person here? So that that is a framework for uh, a clinic. There should be a person in the reception to address the patient and then uh, uh, it will work out. I said I don't have any income but how can I appoint a person there? But he told them just do it. So I went home. And I didn't search for any BSc uh, uh, nursing graduates or I didn't search for any pharmacist there. Instead, I went and approached my sister's servant who was the BBC of the colony. Okay? So whatever uh, up will be turned as up, up into the colony. So I went and approached her and I put her in my clinic. So within the span of uh, two to three weeks, I started getting people around 10 to 12 patients per day. So after 10 to 12 patients, again there was a discrepancy. Um, I had to start upgrading myself, so I put up a token system there. So the token system started with 1 to 12, so every day you don't get 12 patients. So that means certain times that 3 or 4 patients will come. So at that time the patient who came at around 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the night, got the third number of third number token. So he was like, oh, the doctor has not seen any patients till now. He started the clinic from 4 o'clock and there's only 3 patients here. 
So what I told Arka is, since Arka, since she, since she is a DPC, she used to come and talk to me back also. So what Arka told us that this is a problem. The patient is having, uh, there is a poor going on like this. Then what I told her is, instead of starting the number one token, start it from number twelve token. The first patient who will come will be having the token number twelve, token number thirteen, and it will be going on so on. So that the patient psychologically gets satisfied that he is around the twelfth and thirteenth patient coming there. So this is a small idea which I got to run a clinic for just for pocket money while pursuing my postgraduate entrance exam. So if this idea can be taught to me, taught to people by a simple student like me, we have the various medical fraternities like our Aston professor, professors, HOD who have various experiences in establishing their clinic and all those things. So this, their experiences are going to save years and it is going to create a lot of difference in the economy of running our business. So, and when you think about other subjects like management studies or engineering, they have the uh, option of getting into an, um, they have a subject called management along with them. But here in the medical curriculum, we lack that. So it is very important that the along with ethics, management or the entrepreneurship skill should also be added in the medi uh, medical curriculum. How to manage the accounts? Once the doctor, as, as I said, once the doctor is out of the medical field, he goes into uh, the clinic and starts a cleaning. He doesn't know how to multiply his organization. See, once he sits there, he is the, um, he has the same board and the same thing. So how to multiply, how to invest on certain things, certain ideas. These ideas can be not only starting up a cleaning, starting up anything creatively. If you are in a medical, if you are, uh, uh, if you are a diabetologist, why don't you start a, um, if you are very interested in food, why don't you start a diabetic friendly restaurant or a cafe? Why, if you are an, um, a, a person who is a physician, why don't you start a, a, a cafe uh, for an obstacle, obesity friendly cafe? So these are the various creative things which go badly, not only along with your uh, subject of reading, just um, or if you are interested in social service or if you are interested in um, uh, something like that, you have a team of doctors. So that is why the medical curriculum or being an MBBS, when you are in an uh, internship or when you are doing a postgraduate, you have lot of friends with you, lot of circles with you, lot of networking is very easy for you. And when this entrepreneurship skill is being injected with you during, probably during your internship time and post-graduation time, it will be very, very helpful for you to communicate, make a network and be a better entrepreneur um, in your life. So concluding, the world is full of obvious things which nobody any chance observes. This is a famous quote by Sherlock Holmes. I would like to conclude by this and uh, I would like to thank the organization for giving me such a great opportunity to speak. Thank you. Outstanding question. It was really outstanding. But you know, like as soon as we the students, you know, what do you think? Like if we hear the word Zumba, what you know what is what will run into, into their heads? Yeah, we all know what will run into their heads. But you are seeing it in an entrepreneurship angle that is really outstanding. And uh, because of the outstanding GP practice, you have got a good watch also. I have noticed. Right. That was really good. So that was an awesome speech by uh, Vaishnav. So let's see what is the negative part of this entrepreneurship by Ms. Nathan. Good evening everyone, I am Teja Hajira, a student of first year at UBS. So, uh, I am going to speak against the topic, uh, should entrepreneurship education be included in healthcare professional studies. As you all know, our survey country with people belong to different economic class. Some are rich, majority is poor, some belong to upper middle class and some belong to lower middle class. In such a country, there can never be a one side fits all formula for anything. Today we are discussing about should entrepreneurship education be included in healthcare professional education. Who else but present or future doctors would be able to analyze it rationally? At the outset, let me compare the two by the definition. World Health Organization defines health education as comprising of consciously constructed opportunities 
by learning involving some form of stream of communication, define to improve health literacy, including improving knowledge and developing life skills which are conducive to individual and community health. Entrepreneurship education, on the other hand, is defined as collection of formalized teaching that informs education and trains anyone concerned in business establishment. Goals of entrepreneurship include developing business plans that leads to a product and working with ideal clients to maximize their products. This maximum return is the purpose of entrepreneurship. Uh, I believe that a doctor's priority should not be business oriented or earning profit. His or her work is one of selflessness and service to the needy people. I believe that a medical profession is one which requires compassion, compassion towards their work. The goal of entrepreneurship inter area would be maximizing profits. If profit becomes the goal of a doctor, then compassion and selflessness would be lost or fight off. At the very purpose of profession which is cure and care will be defeated. These goals of entrepreneurship are thus in contradiction with the goals of medical profession which encompass relief of pain, suffering, promotion to health, cure of disease when possible and care of those who cannot be cured. The doctor to population ratio in India is 1 ratio 2148, that is 1 doctor for about 2000 people. This statistic is in wide variation to doctor population ratio of other countries like USA and UK, which stands at 3 ratio 1000, that is 3 doctors for about 1000 people. But these kind of statistics can we expect to professionalize the medical system? to suit only those who can afford expensive medical facilities. Indeed, no. We need to have a holistic approach to medical facilities which will benefit maximum number of people possible. Contrary in a profit-oriented approach, while medical professionals will not lead to a healthy nation. Entrepreneurship, on the other hand, indeed involves working on maximizing profits and return-oriented approach at every stage. If an entrepreneur starts to empathize with his clients, then profit, which is the basic objective, will be lost sight of. I would like to share a very personal experience. Uh, years back, I was there in Chandigarh. I was around 9 or 10 years of age. And I have a younger brother. He was at the time two and a half, three years of age. So, uh, my mother, she is a working woman. She is working with Reserve Bank of India. She was posted there and we have a really nice children's park in front of her house. Uh, so, my brother, he was playing and he was hit by a seesaw and he had a very deep cut and he was bleeding profusely at that time. Uh, me, my mother was there in her, her office. So, me and along with my neighbors, we went to hospital. Initially, the doctor, he recommended for a normal stitches. As soon as he came to know about my mother's identity and there's a thing called as reimbursement, he immediately shifted his focus to plastic surgery. Three years of age, a child was three years of age and plastic surgery is, mostly it is not recommended. As he was profit-oriented person, he did that. So the point of telling this story is that this mindset shouldn't be there, especially for doctors, this mindset shouldn't be there. When profit is on the mind of doctors, the suffering of the patient is given less importance. You all would agree with me that medical profession is a noble profession and people see God in a doctor who saves thousands of lives. If the medical professions focus on their returns of business activity, the very purpose of being a lifesaver is defeated. If entrepreneurship education is included, the approach of students will be shifted from a noble one to a profit-oriented one. Therefore, in my view, educating medical students about need and condition of a society and how important a role they play in a society by saving lives of thousands of people would be far more prudent or compared to professionally oriented approach to medical facilities depriving the poor.
all of the much needed medical attention. Thank you. It was really a good speech, the other thing. Yeah, listening to my personal experience was really good. Really, I guess so, like it was, uh, it was catching the point. And the most important thing, what you are trying to say is empathy and profit doesn't go in hand by any means. Whatever it is, it's not, it, they will never go in hand, like a male and a female, right? Okay. So let's see the other team, again, the alumni team, which is been now. Uh, so now the speaker from the affirmative team will be Mr. Pragadish, first MBBS. Let's see, he is going to support this. He is going to say that empathy and profit will work together. Let's see what he says. Good morning, all. I'm Pragadish, your first year. Good evening, good afternoon, good friends, and all those gentlemen who are here. And uh, I would like to start my reply with a topic. People have this misconception of entrepreneurship is only for the people who graduate from medical business schools and also for the people who have huge amount of financial capital. But basically entrepreneurship is not all about that. Entrepreneurship is basically identifying a problem in society and coming up with an innovative idea and then monetizing your idea into an effective product and services to the, to the government or, or to the public. So this is what entrepreneurship is all about. So in first place, today we have told about our financial drawbacks. How about someone with no money can be an entrepreneur, right? I will say an example. I heard the story of an inspiring entrepreneur called Ritesh Agarwal. Okay? He is one of the CEO of OIO, OIO, uh, OIO products. Okay. Firstly, he started his business with just 50 rupees in his hand. Going there to the nearby hotels and developing it and making available available of all those necessary equipments and uh, marketing it as an international or five star hotel or to a very extent for a decent hotel and he made it his first business and right now he is one of the biggest owner for the second or the second most biggest supply chain in this world. So finance, finance is not going to be a big drawback because ventures are there to support us if we have a very good creative idea to come up with. Right? So right now I'm going to say how physicians are fit to be an entrepreneur. Physicians are the exceptionally good one to be an entrepreneur. Because from the day one, physicians have been trained. Sorry. Uh, from the day one, physicians are trained to develop three core abilities. Number one, capacity to learn. Number two, confidence to operate with uncertainty. You can't judge a patient while he comes in comes bleeding, right? Whether he will survive or will dead, he will be never know. We'll start the procedure and we'll continue our talks, what we're gonna do. So it's all about uncertainty. And domain expertise in the areas of healthcare. Being specialized in certain areas of healthcare. So these core these, these three core abilities are entrepreneurial in nature. And so we have entrepreneurship skills in our blood and which is imposed by medical curriculum. And entrepreneurship is also about addressing the challenges of the healthcare with creative and risk-taking, creative problem-solving and risk-taking management. Basically, entrepreneurship is not something which is imposed, it's basically a mindset and which can be inculcated, inculcated with proper education. And uh, so entrepreneurship, the core theme of entrepreneurship up to, the medical, up to the medical side is innovation. Physicians play a central role in discovering and developing transformative medical tools and therapeutics. And so we are using this today. So, so the problem lies in the medical school. In medical school, they, have, they are not teaching about how to convert an idea into product. But classically in business schools, each and every business management is teaching them how to convert their idea into effective product and how to market their content. 
But this need to be inculcated, my request is this need to be inculcated in the medical fraternity to make the best use of the innovative ideas from the amazing minds we have. And uh, we have a threat right now from destructive technology. Destructive, te disruptive technology. Disruptive technology is nothing but a superimposing technology which has superior thought and which can disrupt, which can destroy the conviction one. People who are trained from traditional clinical science who can't handle it. So we need to be on the page to be recruited, uh, gain knowledge on a daily basis, to be on page to, to so to be on the place to uh, make the best use of it. Like uh, we need to be aware about what's our, what is happening around us. So being the being this is notice. 13 medical schools have started to give 13 medical schools around 13 medical schools in Western and Western countries started to issue entrepreneurship certificate on the basis of entrepreneurship skills, innovative thinking, uh, branding the medicine, and also marketing your uh, ideas. By this, if you acquire these skills, they'll and if you if you have an effective prototype and idea, they will give you a certification that you are an entrepreneur, and we can tackle this with a disruptive technology. Okay, then, thank you. <laughs> that is really uh, substantiating thing from the opposite side, right? From the positive side. So, what I say is like not only your the, the interpretation not only means it's profit, but again, like one definition is that the interpretation is about success of the product getting out, success, the product coming out as a success. And uh, we don't know what that actually success means. Most of the means, many people mean it as money. I will see like what is the opposite thing. Now the, we have a speaker, Muskin Raja, a UG student. Please, you can start. He is going to say the opposite side of the return of the college. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Muskan Raja and uh, I am going to be speaking against the topic. So, uh, first of all, I would like to address something that uh, Sir said. Uh, he said that entrepreneurship is about marketing. It's about marketing and making you look like you are the best. This, this strategy of marketing yourself, making yourself look good, creates a very unfair competition to the kind of people who are not maybe so good at people pleasing but have good skills, who have good medical skills. So that's what the medical industry requires. It requires medical professionals who are skilled at training people, not making themselves look good. Secondly, about the mindset. Prakriti spoke about the entrepreneurial mindset. I would like to address that by saying that entrepreneurship eventually means that you're supposed to create, uh, you're supposed to take up a business, you're supposed to uh, create profits out of it. You're supposed to gain money out of it. When it comes to owning a business, when it comes to uh, starting up your own business, the risks and responsibilities that are associated with that business is going to divert your attention away from the actual patient, from your care of the patient. And that's not... So, uh, what I was trying to say is that the uh, risks and responsibilities that are associated with owning a business, with working in a business, and having your own business uh, involve a lot of things like personal investments, slow earnings. These things, these kind of things, can divert your attention away from patient care and the actual medicine. Secondly, the market incentive and the capitalist economy is very contradictory to the actual public health requirements currently. Profit motivated behavior and the profit seeking behavior, it keeps individuals from accessing the necessities, basic necessities and it undermines public health. I'm going to state a few examples like uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic which has been such a big part of our lives, uh, there were a lot of cases. For instance, there was a student who was actually charging his friends for every dollar of hand sanitizer he was giving them. And that student was suspended from school. I think everyone must have heard about it. Uh, apart from that, the online crisis, the price surge in the hand sanitizer prices, the price surge in 
the price of um, tissues, antimicrobial wipes, everything had really undermined the actual necessity of the country, necessity of the people. And this created a market. Who were these people? Who was that student? He was in a way an entrepreneur. He found a strategy and he made profit out of it. When you think about it from a normal person's perspective, from a medical professional's perspective, that's really genius. You're not supposed to do this when, uh, you're not supposed to make money out of people's misery. But then when you look at it from an entrepreneurial side, as one promoter did, he said that you wait for 10 years. This guy is gonna, you know, move the market. He's gonna shift the market. So that's the difference between an entrepreneur and a medical professional. Apart from that, um, uh, for reference, this I had read in a study of COVID-19 capitalism in uh, the Journal for Public Health. Uh, apart from that, talking about the ethical aspect, I feel the response to a disease should not stem from the fact that a market is created out of it. The response to a disease should stem from the basic humanity. There is another concept that I would like to put forward. It's called patient paradox. This concept was put forward by Dr. Margaret McCarthy, who is a British practitioner. So, uh, she spoke about how pharmaceutical companies and uh, mental health care companies, they prefer a certain type of patients, they prefer a certain type of illnesses over the other. And this is mainly because there are certain type of illnesses that provide a market. There are certain type of illnesses that provide profits. And certain types that don't. For instance, uh, chronic diseases like hypertension, uh, chronic respiratory disease, these are diseases that require medicines for a long term. These are diseases that require a person to constantly go and buy medicines, get themselves treated. And these are the kind of diseases that are preferred by the pharmaceutical companies because they can gain a profit when it comes to mental health, when it comes to diseases like cancer, that shorten the market, that divide the market into fragments. They are not willing to go towards that side. And all of this stems from the fact that this does not give them enough money. There is a basic inherent discrimination in the kind of patients you choose. And when you are teaching that in a medical school, when you are teaching that to students to think about uh, the monetary aspect, to think about monetizing your education, you are eventually contradicting their own values that we learn in the medical school. We have learned empathy. In our orientation, the first thing we were taught was empathy. But then, when it goes to entrepreneurship, it shifts to self-interest. And that's a very major contradiction. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, these are some of the few reasons why I believe that entrepreneurial education may be fit for the business, you know, business oriented, but then when it comes to medical professionals, I think it is not the best fit. Thank you. As you said, like uh, removing that word, like once doctor has considered God, even like uh, Shethi was saying, like doctor is equal to God, something like that. And in between these two words, like one word called uh, money or profit, it came in, and all of a sudden it got a big turn. That's what we feel. But uh, Ashos is saying it's not like that, so we'll see what he says. Thank you, sir. I'm Ashutosh. Uh, I've been talking for of entrepreneurship. I will uh, tell a rare example first. Uh, uh, monkey was there. Uh, in front of him, uh, 12 bananas, 200 rupees. 12 bananas and 2 rupees. Can I ask you and went off? 200 left. Why? I will put this example into education. We all need that 9 to 5 job. We will put our brain into someone's idea. We will not take the 200 and buy 200 more bananas, but we will take the 12 bananas. Like that, entrepreneurship is. And healthcare professional is not just we doctors. There are nurses, there are planners, there are administrators, there are physiotherapists, there are many people who are included in this healthcare field. And uh, I'll tell one point which I heard uh, of that. Uh, sorry for your brother that you felt. Uh, plastic surgery. Okay. See the tables now. Uh, you all can see this table. This is a very nice table. And there is one table. Why is that table is not kept here and this one kept there? It looks nice. Plastic surgery will. Melt your like the face will be more beautiful. He wanted in that perspective, he doesn't want to take your money. People write pantoprazol and uh, omeprazole depending on the economic status of the person. That is the main point. Then, next, there are
many fields like we can develop healthcare applications as a manufacturer. Entrepreneurship is a like built in. The entrepreneur idea should be given to the child. How? Sir, uh, MSA World he gave an example of PC rating. Yes, PC rating in the year 1900. Uh, in the year 1983, he thought of an idea Apollo. What is the full form of Apollo? Can anyone tell? The full form of Apollo is adult practitioners, the practitioners. We are the we are the future practitioners. Have a line learning opportunity. Apollo. It's adult practitioners or line learning opportunity. It is given the opportunity to the practitioners to come under one roof and treat the patients. Now, today, by 2020 report, with 62,939 people who are working in Apollo, it's not only 62,939 people, it's 62,929 families. Under that people, they are also getting educated, they are getting the lifestyle because of this one idea Apollo. And he is an entrepreneur. So, entrepreneurship can bring changes into you and it can also bring changes into around you. Simple example, you are a doctor, you have a car, you will take, uh, you will ask one person, entrepreneur, entrepreneur at there. Everybody is an entrepreneur out here who is giving a job to a person. It is not about only medical field people and uh, it's a big uh, exclamatory mark under entrepreneurship, nothing like that. Entre everyone is an entrepreneur who is giving a job. And another example is Kaveri Hospital. Let's see how, why everybody is, everyone is afraid of entrepreneurship, right? Uh, how will it fail or something? Entrepreneurship of Kaveri Hospital. He, uh, that, uh, the person who discovered Kaveri Hospital, he started with 30 beds. 30 beds in Trichy. Now he is having 800 bed hospital. If you would, you would not have started with 30 beds, if you had uh, thought of, we will fail in this, how, what will happen? 13.5% of practitioners are failing in curing the patients. The patients are not cured by 13.5%. 86.5% are getting cured. 13.5%. That is not like you will not fail in that. Everybody will fail. It's like starting off a business, there is a failure is must. Every coin has both the sides. So if you think about the failure, the new pros will not happen. So I'll end it with a uh, point that there is an iron rod which is 300 rupees. It can be made into an horseshoe which is 800 rupees. It can be made into an, uh, uh, let's say, a spring of a watch which is 3000 rupees. So it depends on you that how you are valuing your ideas. You can work for a 60,000 job or you are becoming a boss and giving a person 60,000. Thank you.
ship or entrepreneur was first used by a French economist. I am telling again, economist in uh, 1902 during a public speaking, which was translated as undertaker or an adventurer. So, being a doctor at the same time, I can't do adventures with the lives of my patients. Neither I can't think of being an undertaker unless I have a mentality of making a good business. So the thing is that I am not here to sell you Zumba classes or dance classes or making any bread and butter into biryani. Rather I will stick to save my already hot served biryani and uh, I would uh, like to tell you sir, please don't uh, make others biryani into bread and butter and who are already having bread and butter and don't convert them to nothing There are many instances during the pandemics and I would especially talk about Apollo Hospital only which was recently fined in Noida for creating a bill of 16 lakhs for a patient who was admitted just for 3 days in a COVID ICU. I would like to ask the audience how much it is justified. How much it is justified. It is like an idea come along in a single group and loot the patients. It is, the, it is what entrepreneurship we are talking about. Because entrepreneurship, because the monetization, the power of monetization of entrepreneurship has changed its definition completely. The entrepreneur, which was the word which was first used, was something else. Was the power, but the power of monetization has convert, has changed its definition altogether. And this I came to know after reading a one more very big business venture by Jews, which is whose owner is again a billionaire in India, they are telling that the entrepreneur is a person who has a critical ability. Ah, I am sorry, I am not a critical thinker, I am not an entrepreneur, I am sorry, I am so much sorry, I can't be an innovator. Because I don't want to, I don't want to pull the money from the pockets of my patients, rather I would like to, rather I would like to do a cooperative movement, what I call Hindi in Sekharita. I will, I will make profit to run my bread and butter, to let my colleagues to have bread and butter and let my patients also to have bread and butter. It's a better idea, it's a better ideology. And leadership, and when it comes to leadership qualities, and everybody is connecting entrepreneurship with the leadership qualities. I am sorry to say, Dr. B.C. Roy was a leader, but was not an entrepreneur. Dr. Sushila Nayar was a leader, but was, an inter was not an entrepreneur. My dear friend told that some hospital was created with 10 beds. I would like to tell you, um, just after the independence, Dr. Sushila Nair created, uh, set, set up a clinic in a, in a district, Varda, with just 30 to 35 patients of OPD. Now it is a medical college, well set up trusted medical college, what we know as Martha Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences in Varda. So, after, see, what, uh, we are learning today is not being questioned. The problem is that what we are learning today in the books is not being questioned because, because the society is, the system of the society is made in a way that you should read books but should not question them actually. This is what entrepreneurship is all about. I would like to tell you this fight of entrepreneurship and being a doctor with being a doctor, I am having since long. When I was at, when I, after my 12th, I, instead of trusting my teachers, I went to Akash. And I failed. I went to a medical college. I pursued my MBBS. During my MBBS, I, I didn't again trusted my teachers. And I joined Prep Ladder, I joined Maro. Because they were good at selling themselves. They were selling themselves. They're, their teachers were selling themselves. They were good looking. A fine, good looking, handsome man will come in front of the camera and will teach you something that you won't realize also what you have, what you have got, what you will not have got. But the respect won't go to the teacher who is taking efforts in the world of teaching you. Actually, the thing is that if the world is being conquered by the entrepreneurship, 
The classes in this college, I will bet, will be happening on Mero and the rounds in the board will vanish. Actually, it will be going on daily rounds app only. This is the work. This is the thing. We are going into the entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not about, is not about the only thing. What we think, right? Entrepreneurship is, is not about the innovation. Innovation anyone can do. It's not about critical thinking. That anyone can do. It's not about problem solving in the society, which is the root cause where the business starts from. You can be a social service. You can be, you can be a social service. Uh, you can do a social service and solve the society problem. Why you want to sell your product to the people? Okay, I just, uh, um, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Awesome. It's nothing much to comment here. Uh, like now it's uh, become a really uh, critical hot topic, you know. Now we'll see from the affirmative team, Dr. Lavanya, like how she substantiates all these things. So they treat patients 
at a, way, a very better way than what a person who is earning profits. And uh, yeah, marketing. Uh, you said doctors are marketing even though they are not qualified. Right? And uh, some doctors who are very good surgeons are not uh, approached by the people. That is because they were not taught about entrepreneurship or about marketing in their medical education. That is why they are not known to the people. Had they known that skill earlier, they would have put themselves uh, in the market uh, that I am uh, skilled with so and so uh, abilities and you can approach me. Because they are not identified in the society, they are not approached. And uh, you said that there is diversion of attention because he is becoming an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. So an entrepreneur is not the one who is uh, doing everything by himself. If he had learned entrepreneurship, he would know whom to uh, the right people to be employed at the right places. So he will be a clinician at the same time he has the knowledge of entrepreneurship. So he will appoint only qualified people who can cater to the needs of whatever jobs they are appointed for. Probably a chartered accountant to manage the finances or probably a administrator to manage the hospital administration or the things would have happened. And the price surge during the COVID. Uh, that was because the innovative technology was not uh, there in the medical curriculum initially. People could not manufacture, uh, meet the demands which happened all of a sudden. If there was an uh, institutional innovative cell like this, before uh, the COVID, probably we would have uh, uh, addressed the challenge which had happened during the COVID. We would have manufactured masks and everything. <laughs> and about the patient paradox, it is demand and supply. Uh, people are not making money because uh, they are using the drugs. Because they need drugs, they are manufacturing the drugs. And you said about the 16 lakhs bill from Apollo. Uh, that, that could be one patient who was charged 16 lakhs uh, from the Apollo. That could be some error I am not sure about. But there were 1000 patients who discharged, were discharged the same day who went smiling back to home. So entrepreneurship is not about making money. It is about teaching leadership. It is about teaching the problem in the society. It is about thinking innovatively and identifying a solution to the problem which exists in the society and coming up with new ideas. It's not about making money. And uh, please do not misunderstand entrepreneurship as something to make money. Thank you. First time when we hear such a beautiful word like ethical entrepreneurship, that's like really outstanding word. Like that was really inventive. And uh, in fact, like see the you saw the affirmative team how they approached it. Ma'am had a uh, she has planned like correctly like how to execute, how to attack each of the opposite opponents. She has written everything point by point. So that was it's a planning, it's a part of entrepreneurship, not entrepreneurship, right? Okay, that was too good. So last we have uh, got the opposite side later to couple diagrams. Greetings to all. First, uh, some rebuttals. Already, my colleagues have done many rebuttals. First, uh, Dr. Vaishnav said about the token system in his clinic. What we understood from that? Zumba already was being commented. I did not understand maybe my IQ is less for the first five months. Then I woke up when he talked about the token system from 1 to 12. What is that? It is just a gym. You know, to cheat the patients as though you is too busy. That is entrepreneurship. Sorry, 
for my students. <laughs> it cost almost the same. It has to be compared with Ramapedini. Okay. Pharmacoeconomics. This is the problem with entrepreneurship. Not mastering the subject, thinking about sky high. Very, very bad. I'll come to my talk. My talk. Right. It's a great irony that I've been asked to participate in this debate because one, as a faculty working that too in a private medical college. And that too in an English debate, even though I am the president of Tamil Nadu. <laughs> During the course of the debate, I had to put same side goals as many as possible, not towards my team, but towards the profession which I belong to. And against the opponents to explain the real picture of the medical. Hence, it is important to declare my disclosure or disclaimer that. Whatever I speak here is for the debate purpose alone <laughs> and for nothing else and also not against any individuals, groups or any institution. Nowadays, even a single word uttered is misunderstood and it will explode into a major controversy. This is an example being a Tamil movie, JD, which was released in OTT platform. Tamil people will know. Coming to the subject, entrepreneurship, simple meaning is business. But it has got so many synonyms, not dictionary synonyms. I'll tell you. They are, just like I said, the gimmicks. Copy, malpractice, falsehood, unethical, unlawful, crookedness, greedy, etc. etc. The topic is the entrepreneurship in medical education. But it is already there in primary education itself. For wrong reasons. Yes, I mean the need preparation at the sixth standard itself. Entrepreneurship started at the sixth standard for making money by the academicians, school people. The day is not true for that in LKG itself, need preparation is going to be started. Please understand, I am not against need, but I am against the way it is being implemented. Next, coming to the medical education, there are two types of students. One, upper class students. Already they are entrepreneurs. Their parents are entrepreneurs. They see no need to teach them. Because they know more than what we teach. Because they are upper class people. They wanted only the degree. Yes. Now come to the middle class and the lower middle class people. They had to pay one crore or one and a half crores to complete MBBS. How? By selling the cards, selling the house, pledging the properties, jewels. They are in stress. Parents are in stress. The students are in stress. For such type of people, what you should do? You should teach them the subject properly and make them master in the subject. Instead of that, if you try to teach them entrepreneurship with the limited knowledge they have, they will try to swindle the money from the patients. That is what it has happened with my colleague's house. I'll tell you some real stories. First same side goal that I am going to score. One, one of my friends, when he had a single room cleaning, he used to come in his bike, park the bike, affectionately see the patients waiting outside, laugh at them, enter into his clinic which is a small room and 
patient will come with two or three uh, you know, um, attenders, he talks to them politely, clearly examines them and write the products, the medications which are necessary for him and if at all needed, to the point he writes the uh, investigations if needed. And nominal fees he used to charge. When he built a nursing home, totally the scenario has changed. He comes in a car, he parks the car outside, he arranged a few of her, you know, like my friend, arranged some of the you know, securities to open the car door, to get the, his baggings, you know, and he doesn't look at the patients who are waiting outside in his hospital. He puts the head down and go inside, and the room is big. And only two chairs are there, one for the patient and one for the attendant. No many attenders have been allowed. And he talks very feebly because he's a big doctor. He has to be not understood by the patient or the attender. And he has a, a laboratory inside, he has the medical shop inside. So the practicing pattern itself is changed. Why? Because the EMI is threatening him monthly EMI. So, battery of investigations. As he said, many medications. So that is how the entrepreneurship has changed a noble person into a good entrepreneur. As they claim. Okay. So then, time is over. Time is over. Eight minutes for me. Ten minutes. Eight, ten minutes. Is that so? so this is the problem. <laughs> When you want to talk in detail, there is time out. Half of the page is left. <laughs> okay. So I will tell the headings at least so that you will know. Nexus between the doctors and the pharma companies. For flight tickets. For arranging a five star hotel stay. Unnecessary writing. The unwanted products. And corporate hospitals. They were talking about corporate hospitals. When you enter without the insurance scheme, you will be turned away. When you say that you have the insurance scheme, the face of the receptionist will be brightened. Right? And also, I want to say a critical thing. One of the medical college, which took the clinical trial for vaccine. Some of the factory workers who have come to me for uh, treatment, when I inquired, they had the vaccine in them. I asked when I further dig into their history, they said that my factory owners have forced me to take the vaccine from that institution for the mere 200 rupees. Is that the entrepreneurship that you wanted? No. And I want to quote one important thing. Tripadi, most of you must have visited. There, they give two types of virtues. One is small one as a prasada, free. And one big one as a you know, for, for money you get. If you tasted that, the small laddu will taste more. Even in temples, the entrepreneurship degraded the quality. That is the main thing that you have to know. And yet to be chain, chains of hotels. Yes. About five years back, so, no, very limited number of uh, hotels were there. They were maintaining the quality. Now, with the number of Hotels increasing, you know, when I take the, the food at Chennai, it is good. 20 kilometers away, over road, the taste has changed. 40 kilometers at Thirul road, it is very bad. So, the quality is getting changed because of uh, the entrepreneurship. And the positive side, I tell you, that is one minute to cut a In Thirunal Valley, it is well famous. Yet, uh, uh, family from Rajasthan have come about 100 years back to Trinandali and settled there and they started preparing this alwa. And even today, they have the same infrastructure, they maintain the same quality and the demand is increasing, increasing, increasing. Without entering into the entrepreneurship, they are maintaining the standard. In fact, they are improving or they are proving the entrepreneurship by others competing to match them. 
there is shanti yoga there is uh, some sutra vilas but they are all trained to match those people so without the preparation also you can shine you can maintain the quality and one last thing i will tell you one doctor tirupakkada who is been known as five piece doctor in chennai he was been awarded uh, padma shri just a week before or one month before when he died he was been given a befitted loving you know farewell not by the family members but by the public which he served right and not only that they have installed this uh, statue in the public place right but one bad thing i'll tell you not i should say that on the other on contrast one of the entrepreneur in my native place died 50 year old died he is a good entrepreneur good doctor owning a nursing home and when he died because unfortunately because of covid the same thing has not been shown it is the quality and not the entrepreneurship that is going to attract the patients okay i can do right so finally what i do request is all the stakeholders to teach the students the subject to master in the subject only when they fulfill this you have to think beyond not before that okay so as time is always there yes. you decide i am very happy if uh, even if i have been uh, penalized for taking extra time i don't bother sorry to say this sir but the message has to reach you people if that has reached in your mind i my team members would have been very happy thank you <laughs>
You will have to become that pharmacist. He is not pharmacist. He is not that you enter into the field. He is not the pharmacist who is preparing the drugs. It is again that some big people who are having the industries. So those who are making they, they, they produce the drugs and distributors. Medical staff, medical staff, come on, top slides. So, who are the utilizers here? The patients. It's seen by who? In the doctors. So, try to be entrepreneurial in that aspect rather than that. I think all of you have heard only about the, uh, your profession. So, why pharmacologists, pharmacologists, you know, they are going to propose why not that's a together group of the like what divisions are the groups of doctors who think they are like that? Even starting from your own subject and occupation, you produce your own concepts. Like that, you know you ideas may be there in all aspects, your own subject, innovation. We are using a lot of instruments in our practices, orthopedics, you know, implants. So a lot of things have been produced by work in this report. One person who has many investors have to produce that and sell it to patients. It is that who uses the, 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 these instruments? The doctors. So what I, my personal feeling is that being an entrepreneur in all the industries, in all aspects of uh, your field, so innovation and entrepreneurship in all the fields of medicine. So like a poor hospital, I will appreciate that of a hospital. There is a doctors. So how many hospital private hospitals are there run by a big entrepreneurs? They are not a doctor at all. You are working out of them. A group of doctors get together and start being at home. Nothing wrong with that. You see, somebody is going to steal you, your money. It is just somebody is telling you, you talk together. Don't, and I am not advising you to do unethical practices here. That is the entire difference. Huh? I, this side I support you all people. Stick out to your ethics. And uh, uh, you, you uh, uphold your nations. And try to help the Indian poor peoples. That is a very important point here. But this side, I will say, I will just ask you, are you going to recover your own paid fees here or not? Would like to recover it or not? Did you go according to that? No, you cannot. That's why you have to be entrepreneur. You have to be. For which you have to introduce the entrepreneur, medical education, entrepreneur syllabus. Now raise your hand, how many would like to have an additional burden for your already existing, what is that, uh, CBAP? Very difficult. Practical is different, but you have to do it. But ultimately, what I want to say is, I would like to just see what Madam and myself have done uh, uh, some, uh, we are going to put, the, the topic is different and the argument is different. Let us see that what will happen. I cannot disclose it right now. Congratulate both the teams for your participation, wonderful arguments, and you try to stick to your point for which team you are uh, talking. Uh, I think for important justice for both teams. But as Sir also said, uh, the concept of using the word entrepreneur should not be mistaken for selfish reasons. Well, that's what I just wanted to highlight. And in the curriculum, now more and more, uh, we are really interested to introduce bioethics, ethical components. So how do we use things in a rationalized? Way. Not irrational ways. For example, writing antibiotics. So, rationalized way of writing antibiotics. Both sides you have argued. What is needed exactly? Okay, so uh, we will explain 
uh, empathetic doctor, how he changed to make himself to survive and to keep up his status. So that is the situation. And uh, many times I am uh, basically from nursing, nursing background, and many nursing homes try to engage people who are not qualified professional nurses and not paying them what is appropriate, not engaging the real health team for the benefit of the patient care. If you want to get the real good product, your education and your skills must reach the poor and needy, then you have to have that vision. So that's why we write in every institution what is your vision, your mission, and how you want to reach out to the public. That is the innovative way. And also I would like to share here uh, my parent institution where I am coming from, CMC Valor. You all of you know the history of the pride of Yaskara. How she started her clinic, her service to mankind. Being with father, here Lingi Valor, nearby, the first clinic, okay, it's a 10 beds. Then now the CMC Valor is catering international, okay. So they are recognizing the needs and then provided services, categorized the level of patients according to their economic standards. Now it's growing. We cannot say they are money minded, so they are growing but categorize with services, who needs what. And I, I happened to be in that institute for the meeting, the board meeting, where they wanted to get one MRI scanner beginning days, not now, some 20 years, 25 years back, I'm telling you. Then everybody, argued, all the members are is it really needed to serve the people where 40,000 people are dying of hunger all over the world. I mean, world. So, which one is essential? You now like debate. You weigh the pros and cons and you rationalize your care. And this is what is required. So, the products that we are producing from our institution should carry the name like graduates of ABMC, graduates of nursing, graduates of uh, paramedics, anywhere. Do you feel proud to say, I am the product of so and so? And I'm, I have this vision to serve. And many people are going to rural areas and serving. They are sent to mission hospital to serve. So this is what is required. And ethical practices are introduced. Research ethics are introduced. So that whatever we do, we will not fabricate, we will not exaggerate, we will not do anything out of our abilities. I think this debate topic is really, when Madam asked me yesterday, this is probably true. Uh, for me, I said I uh, would like to have you in the house. We all are happy to be a part of you. And I congratulate Madam and the management and the team who chose this and for celebrating this National Education Day. So it's not general education because everyone says, must not think of colleges, educational institutions for business sake. Anything, how to invest your money, develop a college, engineering college, that college, and then saturation, no jobs, no scope. So finally people go out of work and try to do everything I like. So this is what, and we have, I don't want to get much time, we can share a lot of stories and ethical practices. But now what we want to uh, develop is ethical practices in our educational system. Ultimately, and spread the good news that we are here to serve. At the same time, not we should not be. Uh, nobody will give honorary services. Of course, if I do, I I have to work here. Please. I need some honorary. What is respectable according to the growing economics and economic export. So this is what is required. So at every level, managerial level, middle level, and lower level, everyone should have the same vision. So not, uh, now last week we had a strike, right, for people for Diwali. At least I was thinking in my mind, we could have had at least quarterly once a meeting then. And 
them, listen to them before whatever their requirements. And how do you give your product? Not giving to Diwali at once is something different. But that caring words, giving attention is more important. So you said that the local systems are, of course, that gives so like you have your, you don't have to waste your time, you are there on time and you stop frequency and go without any much time. That's a positive. But the other side, of just for argument's sake, we can also talk. So I just take this opportunity to congratulate both the teams. But as said, there are some criteria given for us to evaluate who the four criteria. Organization, clarity, use of arguments, use of cross-examination and recruiter, and the presentation styling and how much time, etc, etc. So based on that, we try to do something and I think sir will announce. For, this is the debate, any team, but only one team can say, who argued better, that's all. And if nothing, right or wrong, okay? We learn only the positive points from this debate. Thank you very much for that. Like that. 
Thank you everyone. Now I request the other team to come for a photo shoot. Shubha Nami Jaane Tava Shubha Aashish Maha 